Hello, welcome everybody. Today's video is called Why Did Jonah Flee to Tarshish? Praise be to God. Amen. Let's just pray, Father. Thank you so much for the Bible and for the mysteries and all the things that are mysterious are hid inside of you, as Apostle Paul said in Ephesians. We just thank you, Lord, for all the great mysteries that only your Holy Spirit can lead and guide us into. In Jesus' name. Oh, excuse me, apologize, amen. Praise be to God, just falling asleep like Jonah did in the boat and like Jesus did in the boat. So we're going to be examining today what was it about um, fleeing to Tarshish that Jonah felt that he, amen, would be able to escape the prince of God or the anger of God. Why did he not flee to Jerusalem or the temple? Or what was it about Tarshish? that he felt gave him justification of disobeying God. So we're going to be searching that truth out today and discovering it, praise be to God. But before we do that, I wanted to draw your attention to um, and the story of the Gadarenes man in Matthew chapter 8, verses 27 and onwards, and Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. It's found in both these Gospels accounts where you see Jesus, amen. Now, this is where it connects with the book of Jonah, he gets into a boat, amen, and uh, he oh, it describes that, you know, he crosses the other side of the sea, he mentions the word sea, praise be to God, and, and finds himself in the land of the gatherings, where a demon-possessed man, amen, runs to Jesus, and of course, you know, Jesus casts out the demons from him, and the demons are cast into the pigs, and the pigs run over a cliff, uh, and Jesus is begged to please leave the land of the Gadarenes. And in that story, on the way there, Jesus is in a storm in the sea, and he, he, he calms the sea, praise be to God. And, and the disciples say, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the seas, and the, he is a very important word, seas obey him. Okay? And... Um, and the only complication with that story is that many people believed it was the Sea of Galilee when it said he crossed over the other side. But um, the, 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 um, the, the, the Galilee is not a sea, it's a lake. And of course, the fisherman, when he calms the waters, it, um, and, and it says that even the wind and the seas obey him. And in the, in the Lake of Galilee, you don't get storms that make fishermen afraid. Amen. And it's only 15 minutes to land wherever you are. If you're in the, the, the middle of the Lake of Galilee, it only takes 15 minutes to get to land. So they don't have big storms ever that made fishermen afraid and experienced fishermen, whereby, you know, they wouldn't be able to access the other side really easy wherever they were. So it doesn't fit. And also, there was no gathering lands, gatherings, um, record of any place of gatherings found in any of the vicinity of the lake uh, of the Lake Galilee, and there was no record of great pig farms, neither any cliffs where pigs would run over the cliffs. It was also next to the land anywhere found round um, Galilee at all. So it doesn't fit um, and the accounts that they believed it was the Lake of Galilee that he crossed over the other side, because there is no place of gatherings found anywhere amen praise be to god round the lake of galilee at all or even israel praise be to god so amen that puzzled archaeologists so where is this land gatherings and how does that fit into the story of the book of jonah and him fleeing to tarshish what's that got to do with it praise be to god now remember um, and I'm going to show you where it's, it's, it links absolutely directly. Jesus himself said, when he's talking to the Pharisees who demand the sign, he said, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now remember, Jesus said he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Uh, so let's now take a look at the story in Mark 8 and Mark 5 and Matthew 8, it said when Jesus therefore crossed over the other side, which of course we know by the storm it was seas, 
The other side could actually mean the side where the Gentiles are. Because remember, Jesus told the disciples when he gave them power in Mark chapter 3, do not go except to the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Amen. So by Jesus now crossing over the other side, it means he's now going to venture into the land of the Gentiles. Now, why would he do that? Now, remember I said to you before, there's no land of the gatherings found anywhere in Israel. So how could this story be found in Israel? Except now we're going to take a good look at where the land of Gadarenes is found. It is actually found, now watch this, near Tarshish. You see that? So when Jesus has said, no sign shall be given to you except the, the sign of Jonah the prophet. When Jesus went into the boat to the other side, he was actually now fleeing to Tarshish. Exactly taking the, the 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 route that Jonah took. Remember, Jesus said he comes to fulfill the law and the prophets. So he was about to do something that Jonah did. He's about to tell us the reason why Jonah fled to Tarshish. What gave him the justification to believe that it was okay to disobey God, and instead of going to Nineveh. Instead, he went to Tarshish. So let's see and take a good look. When archaeologists found that the only place where the land of the Gadarenes is found is actually round Tarshish, which is round Spain. And that's where they find the land of the Gadarenes. Praise be to God. Now, so therefore, why, amen, um, would Jonah seek to flee there? The Gadarenes, um, they found archaeologically were actually a people of Gad, Israel, that actually, the tribe of Gad, Gad, Gadarenes, actually, in times of persecution, flew Israel, escaped Israel, and, uh, praise be to God, established themselves around Tarshish, and named the place after their tribe, Gad, which is why it's called Gadarenes. Uh, and that's around Tarshish, praise be to God. So there you find... They were what you call a lost tribe, sheep, the house of Israel. And by Jesus going to Gadarene land, which is in Tarshish, he is actually fulfilling what he said. He comes not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's what he was doing. And now you can see now why Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh but actually to Tarshish, because he knew in Tarshish was the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is the tribe of Gad, called Gadarenes. And that's where he wanted to go. He said, if any people need to be saved and brought back to Israel, it is the lost sheep of Israel, which was the tribe of Gad. And that's what Jonah was venturing out to do, which he felt justified, that he was going to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel and not some terrible Gentile um, nation, Nineveh, um, based around Iraq. Iran hated Israel. And therefore you can see why he felt totally justified. And even when the storm was in the sea, so stormy, and he was fast asleep, he would rather die than end up going to um, um, Nineveh. Because he believed by fleeing to Tarshish, he was obeying, amen, a holy thing by going to save those tribe of the lost tribe, sheep of Israel, amen, praise be to God, amen, which was the right thing to do. And that would be the place to go rather than go to Nineveh. And that he believed he was justified. Wow. And praise be to God. And that's what Jesus was doing. Because what happened, remember Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law and the prophets. People have never really understood. No one's understood exactly why Ju um, um, Jonah flees to Tarshish. Just that it was just plain disobedience. That Jonah was just going anywhere but Nineveh. God wanted us to know that Jonah's decision to go to Tarshish 
was one that was righteous. He believed he was doing something righteous, going to save the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel, which was the tribe of God. It wasn't just a, any sporadic choice. And of course, that's what Jesus came to do, to fulfill the law and the prophets, to actually make us understand the prophets better. Praise be to God. Isn't Jesus wonderful at that? Only he can explain to you the reasons why you do things. Even in your terrible disobedience, he seeks to justify you, to show you a godly, holy reason why you ended up here in point A and point B. And that's what he's doing. He's um, justifying and showing us the reason why Jonah wanted to amen, go to Tarshish, praise be to God. Amen. And that's what Jesus is doing, amen, as he crosses the other side and he falls asleep in the boat, just like Jonah. And he ends up in Tarshish, which Jonah didn't. You see? Because Jesus is now going to fulfill the part that Jonah couldn't do. He ends up at the tribe of Gadarenes of Gad, amen, and finds a man possessed by a legion. Now, why a legion? What's that got to do with the tribe of Gad? If you look in your Bible to Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob is blessing the 12 tribes, the 12 sons, amen, when he comes to the tribe of Gad, here's what he said. Gad shall be overcome by a legion or a troop. It means a good, an army. Amen. Uh, 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 but he shall prevail. And that's exactly where this gathering man from the tribe of gatherings is there. From Gad is there. He's been overcome by legion, a troop. Praise be to God. And Jesus is now fulfilling the blessing of Jacob. What a blessing. Jacob, when he was blessing Gad, he could see that in time you're going to be overcome by demons, by a legion. But you're going to overcome, which means the Mashiach is going to reach there and rescue you. And that's exactly what was happening. Jesus then was fulfilling the blessing of Jacob upon God by crossing the sea to the other side. Amen. To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the place that Jonah was on his way to. But he couldn't reach there because he was given another purpose. Jesus alone could rescue the tribe of Gad. Jesus alone could cast out the troop, the legion, the demonic legion that had possessed Gad and rescue him. Praise be to God. What a wonderful promise. Amen. And that's what Jesus was doing. Amen. As he went to the Gadarenes tribe. <coughs> Praise be to God. Which of course you can see it was because it's a place where it was, amen, amen, sur um, surrounded by pigs, which is a Gentile nation. And also you can see, amen, when you visit, amen, the, the place of the Gadarenes around Spain, um, that place, they have a demonic festival um, dedicated to demons, it's called demon, every year. So you see even that now, showing you the memory, praise be to God, that, that, that God had moved to a place that was demonic and that had overcome him. Praise be to God. And of course, what you see um, after Jesus cast out the demon and they go into the pigs, that what happens is that Jesus, the man wants to follow Jesus and Jesus said, no. He says, go home and tell thy friends and family. Why? Because as Jesus left, the man slowly will be telling everybody, his friends and his family of the tribe of Gad, what he had done and what had happened. It's in recorded in archaeology that people from gatherings after the resurrection moved back to Israel as a result of that very miracle. Amen. So you see what Jesus did? He was doing what Jonah desired to do. Jonah desired to bring back the tribe of Gad back to Israel, the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Amen. But Jesus fulfilled the thing that Jonah 
couldn't do and reached the gatherings at Tarshish and amen, as a result of casting out the troop, legion, amen, after his resurrection, they move back to Israel. Praise be to God. In a wonderful, amen, and that what was missing from the story of Jonah. Why did Jonah want to flee to Tarshish? Why did he feel justified in going there rather than Nineveh? Because the lost sheep of Israel had found themselves lost in Tarshish and he wanted to rescue them. But Jesus, amen, was the man only that can do it. And that's what happens in our lives. You know, truly the sign of Jonah goes deeper than what we know. Meaning there's places that we find ourselves lost in that so many people want to come and help you. So many Jonas want to help you. So many doctors and psychologists and friends and family, but they find themselves lost, amen, inside of a storm, amen, that they're not able to help. And that was my life. So many people tried to help me. So many people tried to help me, but the closer they got to me, the worse the storm became. But only Jesus, amen, could find rest in my storms, amen, be fast asleep and be able to reach me, praise be to God, and to cast out the troops, the legions that are bound me, that I was able to find my way back home, that not even the prophets like Jonah could reach and save. That's why Jesus said, all that came before me were thieves and robbers. Nobody could reach this demon-possessed man. Nobody was able to rescue me, but the one, praise be to God, who alone could reach Tarshish and cast out the demons where they belong, praise be to God, in an unclean place, in a place where pigs dwell. Amen. Praise be to God. And that's what Jesus has done. He's rescued me from all the uncleanness, all the demonic forces, amen, that lived in my life. Praise be to God. And he managed to reach the place that no other prophet, no other man of God could reach, but only Jesus. And that's why Jonah tried to get to Tarshish. Amen. Because he knew that the lost sheep of Israel were there. But he was not meant to reach there because it's the place only Jesus could reach. And what an amazing story, you see. It was never around Galilee. It was round Tarshish, and that's where Jesus went in the storm, when he calmed the storm of the seas. Praise be to God. That's why, that, why the seas? Because it's the place that no prophet could reach. That's why Jesus is greater than a prophet. That's why only Jesus could fulfill the law and the prophets that no prophet could reach except him alone that could calm the seas and bring back Gad, which is you and me. Back to God. That's what's going to happen at the end of the days. God is going to bring Israel back to God. But only he can do it. Only he's able to do it. Only he's able to calm the storm which is coming. A storm is coming to Israel. It is so bad. That only Jesus. Amen. Only he. Praise be to God. Is able to find his way. To Tarshish. Amen. I hope you enjoy it because it's a wonderful story. Praise be to God.